believe that the answer to the itinerant problem is in the education of the children. The only couple of coppers you need a children's song and only get the price of things. Yeah, please. Thanks. The only couple of coppers want to get the These children are learning. Learning to beg. It's almost the only education they will ever have. Next week they could be begging in earnest for their mothers, their brothers, their fathers. In ten years' time, unless something drastic is done to help their people, they could be begging for their own children. Ten years more, and they could be teaching them to beg. These are itinerants. To their enemies, tinkers, trash. To their few friends, they are the travellers, the people of the roads. This family was moved on from its last camp before it could even light a fire. The last place that we were in is we were shifted out before we had our breakfast in the morning. And as I hope, when we pull in here, that we will be left longer than we were in the last place. As everywhere we go, there's people complaining before God is it, before we get them any reason. These are Irish families, Irish faces, maybe the purest Irish that there are. Their ancestors were settled men, defeated in war or by famine or eviction, taking to the roads in desperation, learning how to survive from the gypsies and always moving, driven from hole to corner by the fears and hatreds of the fortunate. And often, the fears are justified. The most likely man to feel them yep. is the farmer whose land right, yep. they choose to camp yep. on. His own life may be far too hard and difficult to allow him mental luxuries like pity for the travellers. Those tinkles are an awful nuisance. We have to put up with an awful lot here. They're here for the past two months. They're throwing broken bottles around the place, old canisters knocking our walls, doing a lot of destruction. We don't mind them being left one week, but when they're left anything longer, they create an awful amount of dirt. The place gets infested with rats, and we have an awful lot to put up with. And we think there sh sh something should be done about it. The authorities should come along and see that they're not left so long in the one place. But after in a couple of weeks, the stench of the place is something off. Then our walls are knocked. We have to get men to build them when they leave it. We have broken glass, bottles, everything's thrown around the place. We're getting punctured, our cows are getting cut with bottles. Things like that. Yet when this is home for a family, can they think of animals or anything? What's it like to live in a tent like this with a baby? Well, it is very, very cold, sir. It's very hard, and the rain coming down is so the winter time. Very bad colds and sickness, and when we move around, sir, it is very hard upon us. When I come to a place, we all damp. It's very hard on us, sir. Lying upon up in the straw, then, so there's no fire sometimes. Get a All bit of food this ready. against the constant threat of being moved on or arrested. Guards and magistrates take stern views of most things the tinkers do, and so they must. But if the man of the caravan goes to jail, what can his wife do to feed her children? Go begging, of course, what else could she do? And risk going to jail herself. Leaving her children to fend for themselves in a tent or a caravan. Of course, the local authority would look after them, if anyone in the camp knew how to ask for help. But. Would the local authority give the children back to parents who've both been in jail and have no house, no job, no money? Perhaps they would, but nine times out of ten the travellers prefer not to risk it and try to look after their own.